Hello, and welcome to the Chef Connection. My name is Dolores Allen. I am the president of Center for Housing Education and Financial Fitness, also known as Chef. My special guest today is Demetra Hayding. She is the Dean of Continued Education at the Love and Limited Continued Education Financial Institute, also, also known as Lucy. Uh, welcome, Dem Demetria, and thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Um, our discussion today is small businesses staying viable during the COVID-19 pandemic. And because we know that uh, viable businesses are very important to our communities, and Demetria is also the owner of a business called All Together Lovely, and she's going to tell you more about that business as well as we move along into the discussion. But before we get to dive into this, the discussion, I would like to share a video of the amazing work that Lucy is doing supporting small businesses. Love Unlimited Continuing Education Institute helps to advance the kingdom of God through business ownership. This opportunity, the Entrepreneurial Incubation Academy, is a fantastic opportunity for anyone that is in an existing business and also one that has a thought to get their business on the run. The Love Unlimited Continuing Education Institute's Entrepreneurial Incubator Academy offers workshops and an eight-week course designed specifically for entrepreneurs, both with existing businesses and aspiring startups. Hi, my name is Latrice Brown, formerly known as Chef Latrice. My name and my business is Chef Do Catering. Today we were at a pitch competition for the EIA Institute. And I'm very excited to be here today. I learned so much about being in this program, how to grow my business as an entrepreneur, how to be officially and effectively in the business to go forward in the kingdom of God, how to help my community and help others around me. So it was a very good program to be in. I encourage everyone to come, be a part of it, because you will learn a lot if you're already in business or if you're trying to start up your business. This is the program for you to be in to help you do it right and how to make your money and how to grow and help others around you. So it's very encouraging. I'm excited to be able to get out here in 2020. It's my year to get the job done. My name is Chantal Hampton. I'm with CIBC Bank, and I was one of the bankers who were here at the event today. And the event was awesome. It was full of amazing entrepreneurs. Um, I think it's so important for the people of our community to come and get information about entrepreneurship, come and get information about how we can improve, improve our economy and our neighborhood. So this event was amazing. It was full of information, and I encourage anyone who's looking to just better their neighborhood, better their family, and to be an entrepreneur to come out and get the resources that are available to you for free so that you can build a better business and you can build a, a better community for all of us. And thank you so much. So we created this academy because we want to see people do business better and to advance God's kingdom using their business. This is the place for you. So check out Love Unlimited Ministries and the great offerings here uh, and share with others that are also interested in expanding their businesses. Thanks so much. To learn more about the Entrepreneurial Incubation Academy and the offerings of Love Unlimited Continuing Education Institute, visit us online at www.lucei.org. All right. See, Lucy is doing some amazing work out here with small businesses. So I just want to start the discussion off asking you, Demetria, what inspired you to establish an organization uh, to support business development? Well, um, I started my business like um, 25 years ago. I've been in the um, hair care industry for 30 plus years, but a business owner for 25 years. And um, I had no college background. I just had a trade that I was good at just hairstyling into a business. And for years, I ran the business on trial and error. 
And as years went on, I realized that if I wanted to sustain my business and continue to grow, I needed to seek out um, business education to help me with that. So I started searching and searching and then I had a hard time finding um, education that could help me in my business. And so when I finally found some, I started to take advantage of it and to grow my business and to sustain the business. And so later on, that there were other business owners out there just like me, good at the trade or good at what they do as far as their business is concerned, but they didn't have the business knowledge. And so I wanted to help with that. I wanted to share what I know so that it can avoid them from making mistakes, you know, learn from my other's mistakes so you won't have to make mistakes, you know, so that's the easiest way to do it. So I started the classes and teaching and bringing in all of the resources and the connections that I had made while searching, started bringing them in to teach different classes and um, how to get finances, how to sustain the business, how to structure the business. So that's how it started, out, out, out of a need to help others in their businesses. Wonderful. Um, and, and it's just so wonderful that you, you have a heart to want to do that. And when we're starting out ourselves to uh, establish something that, you know, community work that would help others. Um, it just, we just pour out and that's what, you know, we, we do. And so that is just so great, uh, Demetria. So tell us, you, you, told, you mentioned Altogether Lovely, that is your hairstylist business, correct? So how yes. have you managed uh, to sustain your business during the COVID-19 pandemic? Well, I've been um, fortunate enough to take advantage of some of the grants and um, different loans and programs that they have made available for us as small business owners. That's what's, what really helped me during the pandemic. Um, and while we were at the stay home mandate, when they shut everything down back in in March all the way to June. So I was able to also take advantage of unemployment because I was, uh, because I set my business up right from the very beginning, I was able to pay myself as an employee and I've been doing that for years. So when it was time for me to, to draw the unemployment, like they shut us down in March. I, I think it was like the, some like the first week of March, somewhere around there. As soon as they had announced on the news that they were shutting us down, I immediately went online that next day and filed for unemployment. Two weeks after that, I was getting unemployment. Whereas a lot of the other um, small business owners, their businesses weren't set up that way. They, they weren't structured in the right way. So they weren't able to take advantage of that. So it took months and they were able to get it because the government um, released it for them to get something, but they still weren't able to get as much as they could have had they had their businesses set up, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's some of the things that I was able to take advantage of as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so it wasn't all about strategy. It was all about just being set up the proper way in the first place so that you, sec that you secure yourself in the event exactly. of a crisis. Yes. Wonderful. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and then for uh, businesses that were able to sustain to or reopen during the first wave of the pandemic, how do you suggest they prepare for the second wave, seeing that uh, we may be facing another stay-at-home uh, statewide shut down or in addition to the advisory that we're all that has already taken place with the city of chicago mm -hmm. since the um pandemic started march of this year although it's like november now they started having all of these different classes and webinars and um seminars and zoom meetings I think that business owners need to take time and take advantage of it. Even if you're working and you don't have time to um, look at them, just sign up for those different webinars because 99.9% .9 of them are free. Sign up for them so that you can get more education on how to structure your businesses so that when this happens again, you'll be able to do that. And also take advantage of the Love Unlimited Continuing Education Institute classes because mm -hmm. we're offering a lot of those different classes too, how to structure your, how to, um, notice how to be able to when those different risks come up how to be able to handle them um financial preparation how to get all of that paperwork that you need how to get those things um 
prepared and how to keep your books in a way that you have those different statements that they need, like financial statements that they need at the spare of a moment. You know, so different things like that. That's some of the ways that they can take advantage of it. But most of all, take advantage of all of the free education that they're given right now. You know, take advantage of those things because it'll help you and your business even after the pandemic, even going forward in years to come. Wonderful. Okay, so we're going to pause here for a couple of brief announcements. And so I know that you share with me, Demetria, that uh, the, the Lucy is going to start up their courses again uh, mm -hmm. next in, in January, I believe. You want to tell us yes. more about that? Yeah, we're starting our courses back up in January. We won't be able to start the eight-week Entrepreneur Incubator Academy course yet because we want to make sure um, that we're completely out of the pandemic. But what we are doing is individual classes. We're going to do um, tech classes. We have a tech class coming up January the 30th, I believe it is. And, uh, and that class is going to be teaching how to technology, how to operate the different um, cell phones and um iPads and um, computers, because all of those things are needed. Those skills yeah. are needed to run your business. We're going to be doing a financial literacy class uh, for personal finances, and then we're going to do one for businesses as well. Um, business acquisition, how acquisition preparation is what we call it. How to prepare the paperwork that you're going to need to sustain your business when you for all of these different all of the different paperwork. We're going to teach you how to do that, you know, different classes like that. And some other classes too, you can visit us at lucy.org, L-U-C-E-I.org for a list of all of the different classes that we're gonna be offering in this coming year, the upcoming new year. Wonderful, you have a phone number you'd like to share as well? Yeah, 773-776-7494. Yeah. Um, and the addresses for the Institute is, um, we have two addresses. The ministry's address is 1844 West 63rd Street and the Institute is directly across the street at 1841, excuse me, West 63rd Street in the, in the West Inglewood community. Okay, okay. And also adding to that, uh, in February 2021, Chef will be offering a uh, virtual four-week hands-on comprehensive workshop on how to start a nonprofit organization. And some of the co uh, content that will be included are steps to incorporating your nonprofit, applying for your EIN number, filing for your 501c3 uh, exempt uh, status with the IRS. And there's going to be much, much more because there's so much to learn when you're starting to start a nonprofit organization. But Chef will be offering a hands-on hands comprehensive four-week workshop course. And uh, also there will be opportunities for you to connect with some of our partners like Lucy, who can help you further develop your business. And Chef can be reached at uh, area code 708 three four zero five two five four also our email address is chef 733 at gmail.com and um, you can also visit our website at www.myshef.org and I have a correction on that phone number uh, phone number seven zero eight three four zero five two five nine seven zero eight three four zero five two Five, nine. So we're going to dive back into a couple of questions. Demetra has so much great information that she's sharing with us today on business development. So uh, Demetra, are there any uh, current resources or financial support uh, that small businesses can tap into or uh, assistance that you foresee uh, as far as more resources being made av available now or in the foreseeable future? Yes, absolutely. There's so many resources out there and so much money out there that um, they're trying to give away. And I think one of the problems is, is again, the businesses are not set up structured properly to receive it. Um, some of the grants that they have out there, they have right now that's open is the big grant. That's the business interruption grant. Mm 
And that is through the uh, state of Illinois. Oh no, that one is through, the, I think the city of Chicago. And what they're doing is they're, they're give, giving grants to small businesses and um, they judge how much you're able to get by, um, no, this particular one, there's so many grants out there that <laughs> out there, but this particular one, they give you up to $10,000 in a grant that you don't have 10, to pay. 10000 10,000 dollar wow. grant. Okay. Yes. And that's open right now. And um, the reason why so much money left is because a lot of the businesses are not being approved for the grant because, again, their businesses are not set up right. They're not paying their taxes. They're not um, filing like they should. They're not in taxes, things like that. So that's one of the grants. Um, the Paycheck Protection Program is still going on. Okay. You're still able to benefit from that. Not only that, if you've received it, because I've received both of these grants, the PPP and the um, big, the business interruption grant. With the PPP grant, the Paycheck Protection Program, now um, they've opened up the portal where you can get forgiveness, where you don't have to pay it back. So as long as you have done what you're supposed to do with it, which is your payroll and operating expectation, legitimate documentation that that's what you've done with the money, then you don't have to pay those grants back. Also, they have the, the, the another one from the SBA is the EIDL, the uh, Economic Injury Disaster Loan through SBA. They have an, the advance, you can't get the advance anymore, which was the grant that you can get up to $1,000 per employee. Um, but they still have the loans that are going on. And it's okay that if you're a small business, it's okay to take the loan. You don't have to start paying. And the loan is only like anywhere from 1% to 3% interest rate. I mean, that is unheard of. Mm -hmm. so, especially in minority small businesses, you know, because we have so many things going on in our businesses, I, sometimes our credit might not be that well, as good as it should be. So mm -hmm. we end up having to get loans at a higher interest rate. But right now they're offering loans at, in between 1% to 3%. So why not take advantage of that right now? You can utilize that in building your business during this pandemic is in place to go forth in the business. And then there are other grants like the Comcast RISE grant. That application opens up on November 24th. That's another one that you can apply for and take advantage of. Or just Google COVID-19 small business grants and all kind of grants will pop up. And, and apply for as many as you can, something will come up. That's the key, apply for as many as you can. Because mm -hmm. you, you know, then you may, something may fall for you. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Because there are, are there, uh, is there financial help for businesses? Say they had just got started. They were in business only like two or three months and then the pandemic hit. So they didn't get a chance to really get established well. Are, is there help for those type of businesses? Well, I think the only help that they had made, had made available for them is the unemployment, um, to draw unemployment. I'm not sure I can do some more research on that um, area, but um, I do know for existing businesses, there was a lot available, and it still is. Wonderful. You just have to do your due diligence and research. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, so from an optimistic point of view, uh, what are some possible opportunities for businesses as a result of having to shift and make changes during the pandemic, had to, you know, come up with some strategies to keep afloat? It may not be necessarily the same services that they've been offering or products, and they had to make some changes. What would you say to that? Yeah, I had yeah, I can speak for myself as a business owner. I own a salon, Altogether Lovely as a um, hair management company. And under that umbrella, uh, it's a salon under that. I have a hair care product line as well. So what I did during the pandemic and what I'm doing now is I sell my products online more. So that's a transition that I had to make. I had to use some strategies, be strategic about it. And um, I started selling online during the pandemic to the clients and to others as well, like packets of products that you can use these at home during the pandemic, even with step-by-step -step how to manage your hair, um, online classes, um, online Zoom classes, teaching consumers how to manage their hair, you know. Okay things comfortable with doing because it was out of my comfort zone, but it helped me because so when we're out of this pandemic, this is something that I can add another revenue, a stream of revenue that I can add to my business. 
So those are the, some of the things that I've done. And, and other people can do that as well. I've heard like some of the people that cook the restaurants, they mm -hmm. started doing a lot of catering and deliveries, you know, things like that, that you not, don't usually do, but now you have to because of the pandemic. So that's some of the things. And that is so wonderful because you know, we as women, we, lo we love to take care of our hair. And so I know many of us have found uh -huh. ourselves just not really letting it go, but probably even paying more attention than, than we did before the pandemic because we just didn't have time. Mm -hmm. We're always on the go. We just right. may do whatever worked for us to keep going, but now have time to stop and treat your hair and take care of it better. And you, you know, providing those kind of classes virtually, I think that was just a wonderful strategy. So um, that that is just absolutely fantastic. So uh, tell us, um, talk to us about how crucial it is for businesses to come together and partner for a common cause to serve our communities during this time? Well, I'm a firm believer that it's stronger. We, we're stronger when we come together as a community and not just physical community. Like I'm in the West Inglewood community. I'm just not talking about just the Inglewood community. I'm talking about us as a community as a whole, small businesses with strong sources. I know in the beginning, I had a hard time getting information because people weren't willing to share the information. You know, and I said that when if I ever got to a platform where I'm able to teach people, I would share everything that I know because I want them to achieve success as well and be able to sustain as well. So that's one thing just to um, come together and share. Um, each business supplies different things. Collaboration is key. Yeah. If we collaborate, like you and I are doing, you know, yeah. if we start collaborating with other businesses, we bring our resources to businesses. So that's just some of the things. And then again, share, share your resources, share what you know, share how you did it. You know, during the pandemic, a lot of hairstylists weren't able or didn't know how to draw their unemployment or go in to fill it out. I knew how to do that. So some of them had reached out to me. So I started helping them during the pandemic. I would be on the phone with them, showing them step by step how to apply for their unemployment. So things like that, you know, we're doing the pandemic, we're not doing anything, why not use that time to help someone else? So that's some of the things that um, I was doing. And I think that others have other resources that they can share that they can do as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And we know that in doing that, you, there are the opportunities that will come to the surface that you weren't even, that you didn't even think about before the pandemic. So that is so mm -hmm. wonderful. Well, um, Demetria, uh, thank you so much for joining me today, sharing this valuable information on support of small businesses. And so that's all the time we have for today, for our show today. And so we just want you to remember uh, for more information on the upcoming course on how to start a nonprofit corporation, reach out to us at 708-340-5259. Uh, email chef733 at gmail.com and you can also again visit our website at www.myshef.org uh, and so we'll see you the next time on the Chef Connection and I want to say be well and be safe. Thank you. <laughs>